on the 12th of October 2005, the Chinese space shuttle Shenzhou-6 took off into space. Accompanying it was the golden ornament of the divine solar bird embroidered into the Shu style. What sort of cultural relic is this and why was it awarded such an honor? To answer this, we must turn to the year 2001. On the 8th of February 2001, an archaeological site of the Shu culture was discovered in Sichuan province. Over 3,000 years old, it belonged to the late years of the Shang dynasty. This was the first circular golden foil ever found in China. Its outer diameter measures 12.5 centimeters, its inner 5.29, while only 0.02 centimeters thick, it weighs a slight 20 grams. On the center of the piece, 12 rays of light have been carved out in a clockwise motion, while around them are four phoenixes flying in the opposite direction. The phoenixes have their necks craned and their claws stretched, each of their heads almost touching the tail of the next. Such an ingenious technique and expression was crafted over 3,000 years ago through the hands of our ancient Shu Chinese forefathers. Regarding the question of how such a paper-thin golden sheet could have been produced such a long time ago, even experts dare only to venture a hypothesis. The ancient Shu artisans would first heat and forge the golden piece in its natural state, to then hammer it repeatedly into a paper-thin layer before designing and carving out its pattern. The divine solar bird was an ancient totemic figure of the Shu people. Today, pieces thus reflect the elementary nature of primitive man's worldviews and outlooks. Ancient China is rich in legends regarding the sun and the divine bird. The early Chinese used to link the image of the bird suspended in the sky with that of the sun, believing that it was an enormous bird that carried the sun itself on its back across the sky. This is how the legend of the squatting bird within the sun came about. This legend told of a three-legged bird called golden bird or solar bird which lived within the sun. The legend speaks of a place in a time long ago where at the end of the eastern sea grew a sacred hibiscus tree. On the top of the tree, ten bright suns would rest, taking turns to fly from the tree into the sky, traveling from east to west, returning to the sacred tree for rest at sunset. But when the age of the Emperor Yao came, the ten suns decided to come out all together all at once, causing the grain seeds to dry and wither causing famine and chaos. But a famous archer called Ho Yi shot down nine of the sons with his arrows. From then onward, all crops were bounteous and Ho Yi became a great hero in the people's hearts and minds. At the site of from the Shu civilization, there were still plenty of pieces depicting the sun, sacred trees or divine birds. This sacred tree in bronze, which was disinterred from the ruins of the San Xing site in Sichuan, is 3.95 meters tall and holds nine divine solar birds. Because at the time of its discovery, the tree had already been broken in places, many postulate that there was once a tenth solar bird on its very top, illustrating magnificently the legend of the ten suns and showing the worship of the sun and the solar birds that imbued the culture of the ancient Shu people. There is yet another relic that depicts the cult of the sun and the solar birds. It comes from within the treasures on earth at the Han Dynasty tomb in Ma Wang Dui at Changsha, Hunan province. It is a painting of the sunrise hibiscus that depicts the legend of the ten suns. How does this painting depict the divine birds? We welcome you to join us in answering this question in our next episode.